my name is Chris Akbar and I'm from Pennsylvania and in 1985 I had inflammatory breast cancer it was discovered and before that time I was a meat and potatoes American I'm half Irish and half German and I ate tons and tons of that stuff especially dairy food and I never had mother's milk I only ever had cow milk and sugar what, what, what I was grown up on and I always very was very heavy and when I um, turned 30, I became lacto ovo vegetarian. That meant I meant I ate ice cream, chocolate, eggs, and cheese, <laughs> and tons of pizzas. And I, I was very, very heavy. I went on a special diet, and I was eating 48 eggs a week. And after that, I ate nothing but ice cream to kind of balance it. And I um, discovered a red hot um, mass in my left breast, and I took antibiotics for two weeks, and nothing happened. They thought it was mastitis, but it wasn't. And then after that, they um, gave me um, a mammogram, and that really didn't show anything because it was more diffuse. And then they gave me ultrasound, and that didn't show anything. And then finally, they gave me a little surgical biopsy, a small incision, and they said, you have inflammatory breast cancer. And it's the worst kind you could have, and you may only have two or three months to live. And I was 33 at the time, and I was a graduate student in physics. And uh, I was staying up all night eating ice cream sandwiches. And I was very, very fat. I weighed 170 pounds. And um, I asked the doctor, well, how come I have breast cancer and inflammatory breast cancer? And he said, it's genetic. But nobody that I knew of my family ever had any cancer before. They all had died of heart attacks when they were in their 60s. And that didn't make any sense. And then I said, what can I eat? I'm really, really fat. And I think there's some connection between my, my eating and, and what's wrong with me. And the man said, don't lose any weight because you're going on chemotherapy tomorrow. And if you lose any weight, you're, you'll be dying even faster because the cancer will be wasting away your muscles. So he told me to eat chocolate and sure, or anything that I liked, including chocolate or whatever I was eating. And that didn't make any sense to me. I thought the doctor was a little bit crazy. <laughs> and uh, I was in Connecticut at the, at the time. And I was at a, at a, a studying in, at a graduate school that um, had a medical school at, at, associated with it. It was actually Yale Medical School. And I went there and I did research on inflammatory cancer. And everybody died within two years, no matter what they did, if they did chemo or radiation or surgery or anything. And um, so I collected a huge notebook of all the medical reports, and I could actually talk to the doctors intelligently about what, what my prognosis was. So anyway, the next day they gave me chemotherapy, and um, I lost all my hair within three weeks. I had hot flashes. I was nauseous. I was really a disaster. And then I said, um, I, um, meanwhile, my, I have a twin sister who was living in Long Island, and um, she found this wonderful book called Recalled by Life. It's about a doctor from Philadelphia who had um, prostate cancer that had spread throughout his bones. And he was eating a gourmet French diet with all kinds of sauces and wines and meats and things like that. And he picked up some hitchhikers. He was dying. He, only, he, he had tried everything medically. He was the chairman of Methodist Hospital in, in Philadelphia. He tried everything medically to cure himself, and nothing worked. And then he picked up some hitchhikers who said, try macrobiotics. And he did, and after one year, he had no cancer left, simply by switching his diet and stopping med medical treatments. So a minute, and it was a wonderful medical doctor, and I was from Pennsylvania, and it just sort of hit home. I said, I know my diet has something to do with what's wrong with me. So I picked up a macrobiotic book. It was called The Cancer Prevention Diet. It said the cause of breast cancer is dairy food and sweets. Well, here I was eating every, I was a dairy queen. I was half cow. I was eating dairy food constantly. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm throwing everything out of my kitchen. This is the end of it, and I'm just going to do macrobiotics. So I bought all this brown rice and miso and, and umaboshi and all these strange-sounding things, wakame seaweed and this stuff, and I just started to cook. And even though I was throwing up from the drugs, I, I, the drugs were horrible. I did um, cytoxin, 5-FU, and adriamycin, and they were very strong and toxic. And um, so I just started taking cooking classes. And um, I, for about s six weeks, I, I went to see a counselor um, just in my area in Connecticut, and I did cooking classes. And that's how I started macrobiotics. And I said, this is the rest of my life I'm going to do this. I'm not going to cheat. So um, I was really ca careful. My cancer was very, very yin. That meant it was caused, caused by really extreme stuff, sugars and the, and the dairy fat and all this stuff. And it made so much sense. You know, the dairy food goes to the mammary part of your body. It, it just made total sense to me that that's why I was sick. So I was very careful. I didn't have any oil or anything, or anything like chocolate or extreme sweets or even fruit because I, I knew it would you know, make the cancer worse. So I started macrobiotics on my own, and then afterwards the doctor kind of insisted that I do radiation, which I don't know if it was useful or not, but I did radiation twice a day for six weeks, so it was like 72 treatments. And then um, after that, 
Uh, he wanted me to do more s surgery and then more drugs, and I thought I would die from both of them. They were just completely abhorrent to me. So I decided to come to see Michio Kushi at that point. And it, the day I saw, met him was the day the spaceship, space shuttle blew up in America. It was a very sort of auspicious day. And I, I, um, I, Aveline had just written her cancer prevention, uh, the, um, her, book, her cookbook, the Aveline Kushi's Complete Guide to Macrobiotic Cooking. And I, I, she signed it for me. She signed for your happy life. And so I thought, oh, I really am going to have a life after this, and I'm going to treat this like my new Bible. I'm not, not going to ever cheat from this book. And um, Michio gave me some counseling, and he said, you take one more bite of chocolate and you commit suicide. And I was still pretty fat. I still had weighed a lot. Um, and I still had a tumor left. Even though the redness had sort of gone away in the tumor, I still had a tumor left. So he, he gave me a really neat some consultation advice. The simplest thing he gave me was a plaster made out of a kind of b barley called um, hatumugi, or pearl barley. 50% um, that and 50% cabbage. And I would cook the, the barley and take raw cabbage and mash them up together and make a plaster out of it and put it on my, my breast. I did this for about four, four or five days and I suddenly could feel that the tumor was getting smaller. And I had all these really hard dairy cysts, like, you know, kind of calcified ice cream kind of stuff that was stuck in both breasts. I, I would do the plaster on both sides, actually. And I felt those things were starting to get smaller after, after just, like, a week. And I thought, wow, this is working after all these $20,000 worth of medical treatments I had, and just this $10 cabbage plaster is working. This is great. And so that was wonderful. And then to lose weight, he gave me a mixture of carrot and daikon that I grated up every day, about half a cup of each, and I would eat this raw. And it was very hot and bitey, and I would cry when I ate it because it was so stingy, but it worked beautifully. I lost about 50 pounds in, in three months, it was, along with the chemotherapy, of course, but it was great. And then I had terrible sweet cravings my whole life from all the eggs and the cheese and stuff I'd eaten. And I went to a chocolate bar every afternoon at 4 o'clock. And for that, he gave me a real simple remedy um, called sweet vegetable drink, made out of um, just sweet vegetables like onions and carrots and cabbage and, and sweet winter squash. And I would make like cook that up, chop them up and cook like a tea out of it and drink that. And that really helped stop um, my sweet cravings and helped clean up my pancreatic function. And then the last thing, I had really bad con constipation my whole life because I never had any whole grains and my intestines were shot. And um, that's a, a cause of breast cancer a lot of times because the, if you're stuck, everything can't get out, then it kind of builds up like a swamp and you, you, know, you get upper body problems like breast cancer and acne and things. So anyway, I, I just um, I did these simple remedies. I did brown rice and a macrobiotic diet and things. And, um, and, uh, and I stopped my whole my work. I was a graduate student. I was a computer consultant. I just stopped all of that stuff and, and did macrobiotics completely changed my life. And, um, and after just uh, two months of macrobiotics, I got really bad diarrhea one night. I thought, oh my god, what's happening? And the next day I got up and I realized that my whole tumor had just completely melted and gone out of my body and left. So in, in medical terms, I was hopeless after two months. And in macrobiotic, the macrobiotic thinking, I got better in two months. And it was wonderful. It was just sort of, the, you know, to me, it was this complementary antagonist idea between modern medicine and, and this this sort of oriental philosophy. And it made me completely change my life, my whole thinking, because before I was going to be a, a I was a, good, a mathematician and a physicist, actually. I was studying to get a PhD and, you know, sort of work as a professor and sort of, you know, write journals, articles that would, you know, collect dust in libraries and not never help humanity. And after I, I had this sickness, I realized that, you know, I really had to help human beings. Like everything that I had studied about medicine, which had given me up for dead, and about science, I was very disillusioned, and I decided to completely change my life. So I decided to, to go and study at the Cushy Institute, which I did in, in Massachusetts after that, and I helped there with the Way to Health program for a couple of years. And then um, I came to Boston, and I've been helping with the Cushy since then for about seven years. And um, I, I'm still interested in science. I never really finished my, my doctorate degree, but I'm working in alternative medicine, I mean, alternative um, energy ideas. Um, I'm trying to, to um, actually capture the heaven and earth's basic energy and um, harness it in things like pyramids made out of granite and um, to generate electricity from, from quartz and things like that. And I think that's what some of the ancient traditional ideas that, that I'd like to bring back to modern society. And the other thing is I'm working on transmutation. I'm trying to make an, right now I'm working on creating iron out of things like carbon and oxygen. So out of like, out of thin air, out of carbon, and oxy, carbon dioxide, say, the, or carbon monoxide, the, the exhaust pollution from cars, you can actually create iron. And um, that's just one, one example of transmutation, but you can do it by a method of cold fusion. And I'm actually doing some experiments in the basement from that stuff, which is really exciting. So anyway, um, that, I like to make other elements as well. You can, I think it's possible to make all precious metals, gold, platinum, whatever, out of sort of, sort of real simple, readily available um, basic, basic um, elements. 
And um, so it's a way to like totally change industry and totally revolutionize the world, a new industrial revolution that doesn't pollute and doesn't hurt the earth. So I think just as alternative medicine has arisen out of, out of this, this macrobiotic ideas, I think alternative industry is going to happen next, and I'd sort of like to be at the forefront of that. So it, yeah, it's totally revolutionized my life. You know, I, I think I became more humanitarian afterwards, and it got a much bigger view. And health is just sort of the beginning of it, changing that. And now, uh, um, I just I want to change the world. I really want to help people and kind of spread the message. And I'm really grateful that, that um, people are, are making these videos. The Portuguese people are making the videos, and I'm um, trying to promote this around the world because it, it, it'll change a lot of people's lives. <laughs> so thanks very much. <laughs>